formulating a high intensity training program, the first thing to do is arrange the exercises in their proper sequence. It is a physiological fact that during exercise, the larger muscles of the body demand more energy than the smaller ones. It is advantageous, therefore, to work the largest muscles first, early in the workout, when more energy is readily available. From there, you can proceed to work the other major muscle groups of the body in descending order from the largest to the smallest. It is absolutely essential to warm up properly before engaging in any intense physical exercise. This acts as a safeguard against possible injury. Recommended are various stretching movements, including head rotation, toe touching, seated leg splits and squats. Spend no more than 10 minutes engaged in warm-up activities, then move immediately to the workout so as not to lose the benefits of the warm-up. Further specific warm-up action will occur within a particular muscle group during the first several reps of an exercise. When engaging in various stretching movements, you should not force yourself into the stretch position. Doing this will elicit a nerve impulse which will cause your muscles to contract. Instead, you should gently stretch into a comfortable position and hold it for several seconds until your muscles relax. Then gently stretch a little further until you feel sufficiently loose and prepared. Now let's get back to the workout itself. To ensure that the entire muscle is worked, it is important jerky repetitions. Aggressive overload is the cornerstone of an effective weight training program. Add more weight, do more repetitions. This is how you continue to improve. If you persist in handling the same amount of weight for the same number of repetitions, you'll never progress. Your muscles will have no reason to grow bigger and stronger. Recommended is the following method of progressively overloading the muscles. First, choose a weight for each exercise which barely allows the performance of eight repetitions in perfectly strict form. As you continue to train to failure, your strength and size will undoubtedly increase. When you have progressed to the point of being able to perform 12 repetitions, add about 10% more weight to the bar or stack. Your goal again being a progressive increase of intensity and workload placed on the muscle. Intermediate and advanced trainees with at least one to two years of regular intense training will benefit greatly from the correct application of various other techniques. This includes such things as forced reps and pre-exhaustion. For forced repetitions, immediately after your own maximal rep, have a partner assist in the completion of two more repetitions, which would have otherwise been impossible. This will raise the intensity level an additional increment. After exhausting your capacity to control negative resistance movement, you attain a state of total muscular failure. For the additional performance of negative repetitions, have a partner assist in raising the weight. With any remaining available strength, lower the weight slowly back to the starting position. The single most important factor influencing increased muscle size and strength is your capacity to utilize 100% of your momentary ability.
training to failure should be followed by everyone wishing to induce maximum muscle growth. By performing an exercise to a point where you can no longer raise the weight in perfectly strict form, from complete extension to full contraction, you ensure that the breakover point is reached, the level of effort in a set at which growth stimulation commences. Theoretically, there is no problem. On a more practical level, however, this becomes impossible when an exercise involves two or more muscles where one is a weak link. Many conventional weight exercises involve the use of several muscle groups. These compound movements, as they are so called, are seen to involve stronger primary muscles and weaker secondary muscles. In a bench press, for example, it isn't the pectorals that prevent you from lifting more weight or doing more repetitions, it's the smaller, weaker tricep muscles. Situations like this consistently prevent the primary muscles from being worked to a maximum and receiving full growth stimulation. As in the case of the flies bench press combination, the remedy consists in first isolating and tiring the primary muscle, then using secondary muscles in a compound movement for assistance. Practiced in this manner, primary isolation exercises carried to failure will allow smaller, weaker muscles a temporary strength advantage over the fatigued primary muscles in the succeeding compound phase. As Ray demonstrates, proceed immediately with zero rest time from an isolation exercise to a compound exercise. Taking more time than this will seriously compromise the effectiveness of this method. A delay of only three to five seconds will allow the fatigued muscle to regain up to 50% of its initial strength. Keep the following tips in mind. The number of repetitions should not be very high. More than 10 repetitions in each of the two consecutive sets could conceivably lead to a premature cardiorespiratory failure instead of a muscular failure. Never perform more than two consecutive pre-exhausting superset cycles. Beginners will usually not require pre-exhausting techniques. Intermediates and advanced bodybuilders can add forced and negative repetitions to either one or both of the exercises in the pre-exhaustion cycle. Don't get stuck on using pre-exhaustion or any other method exclusively. Using pre-exhaustion once a week for each body part is sufficient. As your body adapts to increasing levels of training intensity and stress, higher levels of intensity will be required to further stimulate muscular growth. The tendency will be a desire to do more. This, however, is neither desirable nor possible. You can train hard or you can train long. You just can't do both. Sustained attempts at high intensity training does little in the way of stimulating further growth. Instead, what results is a reduction of the body's recuperative abilities. All work performed past the point of maximum stimulation will be counterproductive. A routine that is intense enough to stimulate growth must also be short enough to allow growth to take place. If workouts and exercises continue to be added over and above the recommended schedule, your intensity will diminish, and so will your results. It is the intensity of your workout, rather than its duration, that determines your rate of muscular growth. So your immediate goal should be to reduce the time spent in training and to maximize your effort utilized in training. Direct application of these high-intensity training principles will guarantee optimal progress. While it is true that each of us are unique as personalities, it is also true that we are physiologically alike making our training requirements practically identical. Yes, there are those who will gain faster than others owing to differences in existing levels of fitness and development, age, and in innate adaptability to exercise. The important point to remember here is that you will grow progressively larger and stronger muscles only when you train with increasing levels of intensity. This is universal and applies to all human beings. Intense training is purposeful behavior aimed at the goal of increasing muscular size and strength. In order to train as hard as possible, you must retain a clear image of your purpose. Once your goal is sharply but realistically defined, all that remains is carrying out your plan. Don't, however, worry about your individual potential. Potential is only the expression of a possibility, something that can be assessed accurately only in retrospect. In other words, you'll never know how good you might have become unless you try. So let's get with it. Here now is a basic three-day routine meant to be performed every other day with a two-day rest on weekends. It is a full body workout that can be used by athletes, 
bodybuilders, and anyone interested in increasing overall strength and fitness. As a basic routine designed to work all the major muscle groups, it can be used by even advanced trainees with positive results.